you're looking at your future. If you're like a 20 year old dude or something like that in America, you're just like, okay, I'm probably going to be poor. Right. Or I can just gamble it all on, you know, like, like just, just gamble basically. Right. And meme coins are, are one way and then other ways. And like, it's funny to say, but it's also really, really messed up when you just think of like how desperate everybody is. go welcome back to token narratives with bitcoin.com where we discuss the biggest stories shaping the bitcoin and crypto verse my name is graham and i'm repping the marketing function at bitcoin.com we also have bitcoin.com ceo corbin fraser and media product manager david sensel sensel and this week we are excited to have a special guest mr cameron lee there you are yo Cameron is co-founder of Nuon, where he leads product design and development. Nuon V2, uh, which is gearing up for launch, is an inflation-proof stablecoin, aka flat coin, designed to protect, protect users from rising prices. And Cameron is also behind Trueflation, which is an alternative inflation index that uh, you know tells people what the actual inflation rate is. Uh, as opposed to the official of inflation rate as represented by things like CPI. Besides that, Cameron is also a Bitcoin.com alumni. And I was sent this video, which I will briefly share here <laughs> as an introduction. Just give me one moment, please. And I can't bring looks it like, up, but looks like it's working. <laughs> are we working? We're at, we're live on Twitter. We are. You five monkeys. Camera light bulb. Mm -hmm. We're all doing it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Okay, sorry. Cameron Lee, there we go. Let's play it. I feel you, comrade. Yeah. yeah. If you don't have any Bitcoin cash, that's free.bitcoin.com. Yeah, that's my place. Hope, hope I don't get you fired. Yeah. This is great. Okay. Yeah. Hope, hope I don't get you fired. What does that mean? Cameron Lee is... We got hit with a big one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy. Okay. Yeah, let's just, just let it happen, guys. I think it was okay. Let it happen. I think it was okay. <laughs> yeah, I know what I'm going to do. Okay, so we have uh, Cameron Lee there with Bitcoin.com CEO, Corbin Fraser. Many years slightly, ago, slightly younger, slightly skinnier. Version you, of yeah, Corbin. you look yeah, way less wrinkly, man. When I was, uh, I had a little bit of youth, <laughs> youthful vigor still. Um, I was, yep. I was heavy into fasting at that point. Yeah, we were starving ourselves for competition for some yes. reason. And uh, man, you whites, you whites age, age poorly. I have to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah we hit the wall, man. It's, yeah. it's downhill hard. Yeah, <laughs> it hurts. It hurts. It does hurt. Truth hurts. Sorry, I, I, didn't, I, um, I, didn't, I didn't know this was going to be one of those racist kind of things. Sorry, guys. I can't do this. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm the first to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Just no. <laughs> and I'm not white, David, by the way. I'm pink, apparently. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm half by Asian, definition, so. David, but yeah, so by definition, is not allowed to be, is, can't be racist. <laughs> right. There you I've go. Been that one for we're not going to get into that. I've been doing We're some genealogy go. for this type of excuses as well. It's like really just like, uh, can't be that bad. Look at this. Six generations ago. Cameron, uh, we want to hear a little bit about what you're working on. But first, uh, we usually start off the show with a gut check on the markets. And since you are our okay. esteemed guest this week, we'd love to get your thoughts. Are you bullish? Are you bearish? Don't care? What do you think? Oh, dude. I'm an, I'm an idiot. I am the last person you want to ask about that. When it comes to the markets, like <laughs> I, I am an absolute terrible, but I'll tell you what I can do is 
I can see the pattern. And it's like four, you know, up, down, every four years, up, down, it does the thing. You know, I, I believe in the, uh, I don't believe in the having thing, but I do believe in the, uh, the you know, global liquidity. You know, that, that, is, that is the Bible that I believe in. The global liquidity is increasing, and I believe that it's going to bring, is it going to be this month? Is it going to be October? Is it going to be, you know, oct? it's over? I don't know, but like, the market's going up, dude. So just like, yeah, that's my, that's my belief. Well said. Uh, maybe just jumping in on that blood type. Um, who are you voting for for presidential elect election days, November second or whatever okay. it is? What's what's yeah. the plan here? I don't know my blood type. I'm American, right? Um, we we don't. I I don't know um, freedom. And then I've checked before. Maybe it's a. I don't know. Dude, I, I'm not going to pretend like I know. And I'm not going to vote. Like I don't. I don't vote. I don't get in any of that garbage, dude. <laughs> Like, what I don't state, consent to the system. <laughs> what state would you not be voting for? Uh, I would probably not be voting from California. I live in Tokyo. Oh, yeah, you but... don't matter. So it yeah, doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's a wash vote anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cameron, <laughs> thoughts on World Liberty Financial? Uh, I mean, like, I mean, dude, it's, it's you know what? I'm just going to summarize this easily. It's just hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> this guy launching Ave forks or front ends. I don't even remember what it is, dude. But like, along with his NFTs, running for president. I mean, just hilarious. That's that's my only thoughts on the whole thing. Just we, what a time to be alive. You know, this whole world is an absolute joke, and it's great. <laughs> I'm waiting for that call, man. I want that call. Where's Trump's people? Give me a shout. I want in on this Willify thing. <laughs> Willify. <laughs> Get me in, boys. Hey, <laughs> you know, with the world being an, an absolute joke, I think that might be a good pivot to uh, one of the topics that I wanted to discuss here, which is Wait meme a coins. Wait a second, oh, bro. Okay, come on, come on. <laughs> gut check, gut check. Hold on. Oh, gut check. Okay, you need to spew. Only, only the guests gets gut to check. give okay. their... We heard, no, we've just... heard your opinions week <laughs> after week after week. Are you going to trash Ethereum again? Because I'm, I'm over that. That hurts my bags, sir. <laughs> No, I'm bullish. Okay, fine. I say the same thing every week. Good, I'm done. Do you have anything new to add? <laughs> fine. Yeah, I was. I don't know if I was going to save this for later or not, but um, if you look at the bottom of the show and tell the bullish data, I, I threw up something. Uh, All right, I'll bring it up. The other week, not the other week, the other day. Um, I just thought this was interesting, simply from the news perspective. Um, more data corroborating the fact that we're in for a bullish fourth quarter into probably first quarter, second quarter. Um, this is just a really simple. Everyone has access to this, but uh, the Google trends fr from Google trends, you can look up, look this up yourself. Um, the interest in basically by retail, by mainstream searching the term Bitcoin over the last five years. And um, I've highlighted in red um, the beginning of October. Um, and so you can kind of see that uh, pretty, it tracks pretty well that um, the low point is in September, right? And then it ramps up into the fourth quarter uh, and afterwards. So we've just, pe we've just passed the, like the lowest point uh, for like mainstream retail to search for Bitcoin. Um, and presumably this will start to tick up pretty drastically here. Um, going into fourth quarter. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. And uh, actually- And it's, it's, it's targeted to retail, right? This, is, this really captures, I would say, mainstream mainstream's appetite or interest in Bitcoin. Yeah, and on that note, we have the, uh, the HBO documentary, sort of something coming into the public sphere here, where the who is Satoshi, adding to uh, Bitcoin's mystique, intrigue, the the where where did it come from right uh of course hbo's uh answer was just click clickbaity garbage uh, it was it seems. pretty retarded wasn't it uh, like why how did they get there <laughs> has anyone actually watched it or did are we all just kind of watching that one clip on twitter yeah i haven't seen I, it i haven't seen it and nah, from by it. all accounts it's not worth seeing so yeah protest yeah. more slop her, her more slop from hollywood was uh was he, he the, was he the one that they came up with? Is yeah. that him? Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, come on. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. Like, if you're going to choose a CIA asset, at least choose Luke Dash Jr. You know what I mean? Like, why Peter Todd? Luke Dash Jr. has all the charm. Yeah. You know? I don't, and he eats I don't cats, know, so that's pretty based. <laughs> that sounds great. I, I believe that, actually. Did you guys ever see that tweet of Luke, Luke, Luke's where he, no. uh, he was talking about, he's like, I don't discriminate against animals, and I would for sure kill my, my house pet and probably eat it. <laughs> this guy's like contributing to Bitcoin core. He's like, I mean, if my cat died, I would probably eat it. Sure. Oh, uh, <laughs> and then uh, when crypto yeah. was all that weird. It was all that weird, dude. Those, those were the good days, man. Yeah. Get the government yeah. out of my money. He ain't even exactly, Haitian, man. Exactly. You know what? There's one, one interesting point though. I have to say, um, is the lead writer for, um, Bitcoin.com news. Um, watched the documentary, Jamie, talk about Jamie now, who is an OG, one of the maybe uh, oldest OGs for reporting in, in the news space. And he said, while he doesn't think it's Peter, uh, he came away from watching the documentary being more convinced or like giving the percentage that it was Peter at a higher rate than before. So I thought that was interesting. Right? Right. So he's... He still doesn't think it is like uh, on balance of probabilities. However, he did find that it, it, it did move up in his, his own personal view of who, who it could be. So I thought can, that was Can I show my favorite Satoshi theory? Please, yeah. Please do. Paul LaRue, man. I don't even know who that is. Paul LaRue? He was like, okay, uh, he's like a criminal mastermind. He's in jail, and he went to jail right around when Satoshi okay. disappeared. I like this. And yeah. He's like a cartel boss, apparently killed like maybe six, seven people. Uh had like pharmaceutical he was like selling pharmaceutical drugs online. Uh he created TrueCrypt, which was like a C plus okay. plus uh hard drive encryption technology and it uses a lot of the same yeah. properties that, that Bitcoin does. And oh. then that's this the guy, Satoshi we need, dude. Look totally, at that, that guy. Yeah, he's like, and, and he's like an he's like the <laughs> ultimate like libertarian gangster. He also looks like BitBoy. Oh, right. He does. <laughs> yeah. So he's he's in jail, and he I think he's in jail until like 2040 or something like that. Maybe a little bit later. Whoa. Uh, and then yeah, check that out. So he's got a passport. There was a passport of him that that said his name was Paul Solachi Calder Larue, and Solachi's okay. like not far off from Satoshi. I don't okay, know. Maybe a that's a stretch, stretch there. Yeah. Yeah. But, a little bit of a stretch. But the but I see his stuff. picture. I see I see his picture up there in the top left, and I'm just like, I don't even care how good the story is. I want that to be our situation. Like Satoshi. let that guy, let be the guy. Want, uh, yeah, he yeah. and he's so this guy was kind of like a, hold on. Yeah. Is that him <laughs> in handcuffs in a first class lounge? Is, I don't know if it's that handcuffs. Maybe that's like a sweet watch or something. <laughs> you know? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> glow stick? Is that a glow stick? Oh. <laughs> yeah but he's my an favorite, interesting interesting character yeah fun one i i think it was probably um the cia or something like that that's my that's the theory that i ascribe to that it was uh some kind of cia project that was leaked something yeah. like that because i know that they were they were interested in that stuff right well there was Around that, that there time. was that theory that Satoshi Nakamoto supposedly translates to approximately central intelligence in Japanese. I'm oh, not yeah, Japanese, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't confirm that. But apparently I, I, some I translation. Yeah. yeah. So it's like Naka is like center moto, I forgot. But yeah, it was like it's like, you know, like like center, you know, intelligence yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I saw that one. I, I Okay, so all, if you to, Yeah. If you subscribe to this theory, then what's the end game? for the cia there is it like uh to no so to, it like, was more get everyone's data like to, or to, no to, no. Like... no so so uh, there is some um apparently there is some circumstantial evidence that uh cia or other one of these clandestine organizations were keeping track of these cypherpunks and were attending some of the these early conferences um mm. and they had they had they had versions of their of of these projects that they were doing in house, um, because they were trying to find ways to fund okay, fund various. Yeah. And this was leaked. This was leaked. This wasn't put out on purpose. It was like a defunct project, maybe a right. defunct research thing. And then Satoshi might have 
just taken out and, and okay so was satoshi then like the ed snowden of like you know like he was like pre-ed snowden where he took the cia tech and then like released it into the world or was it the cia purposefully leaking this tech to have a new means of paying their clandestine organizations you know uap ufo flat earth kind of like <laughs> people or it's like these spies in russia and they're like hey we got to get our spies some <laughs> some money so we don't know how to do that because like the banks over there so why don't we just send them some of this bitcoin stuff my guess would be it was it was probably just the researcher and or researchers that the cia tapped to do this and then they they threw it in their indiana jones kind of vault you know vault area and then they were like well screw that i want to get it out there but that's yeah, I, I, I mean, I, it seems like a possible play, but man, I really want it to be this degenerate, crazy guy. Look at him. He's a thing of beauty. Could be a UAP <laughs> alien. Could be a UAP connected <laughs> alien kind of entity. Quantum, man. Quantum yeah. energy coming back from the future, giving us digital Well, um, this goes without saying, but... Uh, if he re- remains a mystery, if he continues to remain a mystery, that is good. That's a good thing. It keeps he, the mystique. Graham, he, yeah. Well, who else would it? Would it? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> are you? Are you? No. Finish that sentence. Cre- are you inferring <laughs> women can't create cryptography? Finish, you know, you finish know, that actually, sentence, actually, Graham. I, I'm glad. I'm glad we're doing this because nobody else. Nobody else would actually care. There's this like stupid thing that is only funny in my head. <laughs> But I started using Twitter again, and it's got this analytics. And I went there. I was like, okay, who's looking? And it's like 95% male and 5% female. And I was like, how do I get that down to zero? You know, because, like, my content's <laughs> already pretty bad. And I'm just thinking, like, not because not I have anything against women, but just for the fun of it. Like, how do I get to 100, like, where all girls are just like, no, dude, I can't do this. I just You're want just to get exactly. there. Well, keep talking about yeah. crypto. Apparently, that's the way to uh, chase them away. That's yeah. pretty much the well, thing, right? Yeah. You guys remember that uh, – that- What's it called? That meme I, we brought up a while ago about how uh, what's it called unattractive things were, and then yes, crypto the hobbies. was number two. Unbelievable! Yep. There yep. you go. Yeah, they don't know we're pretty rich. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Cameron, I'd like to dig in more to your uh, what you said there a, a sure. few minutes ago about how. Uh, it the world is a clown it's a clown world what's going on like yeah. w- w- can you can you expand on that yeah dude there's you know it's like i don't know two million views or something like this but this guy murad i think i said his name right um is like he did this meme yep. coin talk at token 2049 and i'm less interested in what you know he said which is like the answer or the solution is meme coins i'm not as interested in that but i am his his diagnosis of the state of the world was pretty spot on like it's all just a joke nobody has a chance nobody's gonna make it like like he said it nicely like you know everyone's pushed lower down the risk curve or something like that like yeah that's one way to say it the other one is like you're looking at your future if you're like a 20 year old dude or something like that in america you're just like okay i'm probably gonna be poor right or i can just gamble it all on you know like like just just gamble basically right and meme coins are are one way and then other ways and like it's funny to say, but it's also really, really messed up when you just think of like how desperate everybody is. And I don't know, Corbin, I, I remember you back in the day, like, you know, we, we all, we're all trying to fight for the real thing. We want, we want financial freedom for the people, yeah. you know, we're like, like, you know, it's like, but it's just so hard not to be cynical, just seeing the state of it all. Like, yeah, yeah I, so I think that's, do is laugh. I think that's the kind of the saddest reality is that so many people that have been in this space for a while, and that came in with this idea of crypto and Bitcoin freeing the masses, this being like a technological revolution and a monetary economic revolution. And then what does retail want? They want dog coins. They want, you know, like stuff that has PX 6,900. Sure. I love that one, dude. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, but part of this though, I, you have to think though, that part of this is the fact that, uh, regulatory bodies like the SEC um, made ICOs and things like that uh, illegal. And so part of the problem is that uh, only VCs and accredited investors can get now get ac- early access to 
yeah. like legitimate crypto projects. And by the time the the retail public or even us can get our hands on it, it's already like a hundred X already. Yeah. They've already yep. those gains have already been made. And so um meme coins seem like a pretty pretty good answer to that being like well fuck you i'm not going to play that game fair by comparison I wanna, yeah yeah i want to i want to get on the ground floor just like you and so yeah. this is this is the only avenue open to me right now yeah but you know i think about that and oh, I, I totally agree and i i agree with this concept and and i actually want to go back to like right now i'm working on this inflation proof stable coin we, we chewed on this like we, we had the idea years ago and like V1 was like eh, a little bit meh. V2 is actually going to be badass, and I'd, I'd love to get into it. But um, what I'm interested in after this, after we get these things out, probably in, into the cycle, what I'd like to do for the next for you know next cycle, probably like I'm willing to do like next ten years of my life is you just said how like the the government made you know ICOs you know illegal. I think that tokens are the ideal form of fundraising, ideal like you know way to do fundraising, and the ICOs were perfect. I see what Legion.cc is doing. I see what Kobe's doing with, with Echo. To me, this is the future. Tokenized equities, where it's not like, you know, oh, my Apple stock is tokenized as a synthetic. Like, no, do you just do it on the on chain from the beginning? And I think there's going to have to be some, there's some like areas like Japan's doing a little, Switzerland's doing some, there's places, there's jurisdictions where they're uh, allowing this and toying with it. And Stacks did it okay in the, the US. But I think we just have to like ignore the SEC or do like not ignore them because I mean they're a giant bully and they're they're gonna hurt you. But we just need to find a way to just like block off the entire United States and anyone who's gonna be mad about this. Just say yeah, screw it. You know we're paying dividends. It's a security. You know, like I don't know how to do that exactly. What I just said is like illegal in like the entire world. I understand that, right? But at some point yeah. we just have to fucking. Uh, I don't know. Do you guys cuss here? Sorry. We just have sure. to do it. You know. We just have to do it at some point. And I don't know what the legal path looks like, but I want to spend all my time figuring out how do I do that without spending the rest of my life in jail? Because Trump tokens, yeah, world coin or whatever his thing vote, is. Vote. World liberty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyways, yeah, kind of a yeah, rant well there because it, it really matters. That was good. Me, yeah. yeah. I remember coming into the crypto in 2017 and being like, yeah, I'm a VC now. <laughs> like yeah. I got access like them, right? Like, like right? Yeah. But then, of course, I ended up website buying. Would go down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I think about this now, Graham. Uh, the crypto version of Tinder. But yeah, look, Graham, think about this now. If ICOs were still normal, I think I think you would do really well this cycle, right? I think yeah, you would have exactly. Yeah. Seriously, I think you, you you've been in the industry Compared long to, enough. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You would have spotted the the you know early projects better right like yeah. the uh zk sinks the athenas all this stuff that Definitely. by the time we but got a hold of it, it was a milk, like you know. yeah. yeah exactly but now those those coins that are like the good ones good, right billion they're, dollars they're by the time we get really to really overvalued exactly yeah yeah 10 billion dollars when they go when they go public <laughs> we've been joke. we've been pushed out and priced yeah. out that's this crazy how we stay I remember, poor I, did, I don't pay a lot i don't pay a lot of attention but i remember like pith is kind of close to what trueflation is doing like somewhat related and so I watched them when they came out and Pith came out at like a $4 billion valuation. I'm just like, what? Like leave a little bit of meat on the bone guys. But yeah. Anyways. So, yeah. so tell us about Nuon. Tell us about flat coins. Ex explain to our uh, viewers, yeah. listeners, what are you guys doing? Well, I mean, like it's just, it's just rising prices are not good. I think we can all agree. And, you know, even like we checked some demographics in like the United States, it's like, Everyone 18 to 29, of all demographics, the biggest thing they're worried about from a voting perspective right now is rising prices or inflation, right? So everybody hates it. And it is, it is bad. I mean, dude, since 2020, like 25% of your savings has been eroded if you held it in, in US dollars. Is that like four years? That's crazy, How much dude. if you held it in, in uh, yen? Oh, I wouldn't know. Actually, I'm, I'm, do, I'm yeah, doing worse than that. Don't do that. Yeah, 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 totally. Any currency, yeah. Totally. Um, but yeah, so so it's just it's just it's just bad, right? And so we're trying to think uh, how do we do this? Um, uh, you know, an inflation-proof stablecoin. And dude, don't want to get too deep into the the details, but like, I can tell you this: like, we are at a bit of a disadvantage because you know the Federal Reserve can just print money, 
right? So like, if we go into like absolute hyperinflation, it's like 200%, 300%, whatever, dude, like, I don't think Nuon keeps up. We actually have a, 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 a seppuku function where it's like, it just commits honorable suicide and just like, you know what, guys, we can't do this anymore. Take your money out. Everyone's made whole. We're just going to, we're just going to stop here because we can't, we can't compete with guys who can literally print whatever they want. But up until like, you know, decent stuff, I think we can handle like 20%. We have simulations still to run on the new version, but, but yeah, we use this really, really clever design um, where so, it, yeah, outpaces inflation. How, how does it work? Yeah. So to kind of like, like really we're, we're not really promoting it yet. You know what I mean? Like we've got the website up like and all that, like I, I want to get deep, deep into it because it's so cool. But if I give you like kind of like the high, high level, it's like the token, this, this part actually excites me is the token is actually crucial. You need to be a token holder to govern the pro protocol and it requires governance. It's not like, you know, oh, it's a governance token. It's literally required to govern. And the incentives are made in such a way where the Nuon holders, so these guys are just guys who just get the, get the Nuon, it's a rebasing token. So if you have like 100 Nuon and inflation is 10%, at the end of the year, you will have 110 Nuon and they're all pegged to a dollar. This is a big deal because flat coins are usually, you know, pegged to this like kind of like floating peg. The V1 of Nuon is I think like currently pegged at like a dollar and four cents. Horrible user experience, right? So we're just like, just peg it to a dollar and rebase so you get, uh, so your balance goes up still with inflation. Those guys, that's it. That's it. You just, you give us stable coins, you get Nuon, you move on with your life. On the other side, the risk on side we get all these giga brains to a very, very, not complex, but a very serious method of managing what assets are stored here. And they're incentivized to get the highest yield for the lowest risk. Because if an asset depegs or goes to zero or whatever, guess who's paying for that? It's the, it's the governance guys. You know what I mean? Like the, there's a complicated thing that explains, but basically we've got incentivized. So it's like, you know, like if a bank, you know, imagine like the United States years ago and like, you know, oh, guys, we, we can't do this. We're too big to fail. And the government's like, yeah, OK, here, we'll, we'll take care of it. We'll pay for it. If that were to happen with Nuon, it would be the guys governing it that get wrecked, like, you know, just like absolutely wrecked. So I don't know. Sometimes I, I, I gloss over things and don't explain it well. Maybe questions would be better. But did it kind of make sense or? Yeah, yeah. Are, are yeah. you guys using the, the Trueflation yeah. uh, like Oracle for absolutely, pricing? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. So it's like you wouldn't be paid in uh, U.S. CPI; you'd be paid in Trueflation CPI. Could you could you bring up the Trueflation chart, uh, Graham? I think that one's probably worth pulling up. I remember looking at this a while back because it is quite shocking when you do see that the <laughs> the current U.S. the U.S. dollar is just going to shit. Yeah. And uh, what they'll report is that it's oh, it's totally fine. You know, don't worry. We'll go on CNBC and say it's it's all good, and then. You have an external third-party metric come in and say, oh, no, <laughs> you guys are cooked. Yep. So the, 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 the idea is that the flat coin, um, the assets from people who uh, purchase Nuon, uh, some amount of that is put into like, kind of like a hedge fund, I guess. And then to, to, to get you. That's a way to look at it, yeah. To get return to mitigate um, the decrease in purchasing power. Yeah. Yep. Now, as long as it it stays at um, like the inflation rate, right? So as as long as it means for long for years, then yes. I think it'll build up trust, right? And then eventually you get to a point where people are like, okay, I just I don't want to go super risk on, but I don't want to lose yep. all my money uh, by just holding dollars. This product right. has a proven track record of keeping up with inflation. I can hold this and know that it's not, I'm not going to get wrecked. Right? Yeah. That, that to me, that's, that's how this that's would we work. Expect. Yeah. It's, it's like, and like, you know, for me, it's like, it's kind on. of hard. Like for me, it's hard because like, I want to tell everybody right now, you know, like mom and pops, like, guys, this is it. You just, just buy this and then you're, you're done. You're set. But dude, when you really get into the level of risk, and I'm sure you guys have, but like when you get into like the counterparty risk, the smart contract risk, all these different risk profiles, and you think about this, dude, it is, it is serious. It is heavy duty to do this in DeFi. And I would really like to see um, more 
seasoned professionals use it for a while and then, you know, have it, have it catch on in the mainstream. Cause I would hate to see grandma yeah, get I mean, wrecked. That would be a great product that, that I would like to have uh, to invest in at certain times of the cycle. Right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> or right. with a certain portion of, of my wealth, if I had any. So maybe yeah. pulling on that thread of what does a crypto industry look like that just cuts off the United States and says, you guys are toxic waste. We're just going to build outside yeah. of your, you know, gated garden, yes. uh, the walled garden of the United States. And it's, it's a heavy handed uh, approach to regulation by enforcement. Um, I've always thought it would be really interesting. Actually, this idea was shared in, in the Bitcoin.com office in like 2018, maybe. I think it might have been Roger that was floating it around there. He's like, but have you guys ever heard of the Eastern Caribbean dollar? I have not. Okay, so the Eastern Caribbean dollar is pegged to the United States dollar. by their okay. So their government currency is pegged to the US dollar. And it's I think it's like 270 to one dollar or something it's like it's like two dollars worth of eastern caribbean dollars is worth about like one dollar or something like that but in theory yeah. if your stable coin was tied to this eastern caribbean dollar you're also tied then to the u.s dollar <laughs> <laughs> so you're kind of like taking this proxy bet where you're like no we, uh, we're not touching the u.s dollar man they are uh, we're safe <laughs> Yeah, I just the I just problem feel like with that is yeah. Go for it. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Well, well, no, just just kind of quick. Like, what I'm saying is terrible, and we cannot do exactly what I'm saying. But where my mind is right now is like you know the old phrase like you know the internet routes around censorship, like it sees it as a flaw and it just routes around it. Like I just think of like these laws, and I'm just like we just have to route around this. Like at a certain point, just start start saying like, I'm sorry, we're doing meme coins because Gary Gensler, you know thinks library is a is a security or something like that like just enough dude like we're just gonna find another way just leave us alone <laughs> like i don't know we got we got to figure it out i i'm not the guy to leave that because i'm not yeah but we should we should be doing that yeah i was Before, just gonna say man. that the problem with pegging yourself to something that isn't pegged to the dollar you're taking on all that risk of the whatever peg that you that you're pegging yourself to right so like you know um currencies that are pegged to the dollar fail semi-regularly um and so you got to be very careful uh by doing that and probably it would just be better to peg yourself to the dollar because you then you cut out all that um what's it called uh exoler no no exogenous risk you know you can't you can't um mitigate that some would call it exogenous risk some would say it's exogenous arbitrage <laughs> yeah until their peg breaks and then your your sol <laughs> i would say this reminds me i think i've brought this up before but uh when i was at when i was in singapore um i was talking about how like um other countries and other jurisdictions like japan and singapore dubai have um done so well by not doing what the sec is doing right and, and how yeah. i was as an american i was very disappointed about, um, you know, the SEC's and, and the government in general, U.S. government in general's yeah. uh, lack of, what, friendliness, Everything. lack of cooperation. And this yeah. guy, he was a he was a Chinese guy, a Chinese businessman, owns a couple companies. He laughed and he was like, oh, you think you think Singapore and uh, Dubai and Japan don't you think you think their version of the SEC doesn't follow America's lead? He's like, no, you're you're wrong. He said that to me. Mm -hmm. He was like, he was like, yeah, we have different rules, and um, there's some progress. But he's like, everybody, all of these governing bodies, all follow the SEC, right? He's like, and so until you get until you guys get your act together, it's going to seriously hamper everyone else. I was like, and I found that fairly depressing, actually. No, I think, yeah, I think just going it. back to the going back to the desperation of like what that Murad guy was saying, and just like rather than taking the desperation and like you know using it to like buy meme coins and you know like treat treat it as a religion or something, like just someone just needs to YOLO and just like break the just break the law, you know what I mean? Just suicide bomb 
DeFi somehow and just like, you know, I'm, I know I'm going to get hit, but there's <laughs> nothing to live for. You know, it's a security. Let's do it. <laughs> Maybe that'll be me. I don't know. I'm just saying, like, that's what it I want to see. It does dude. seem like there are there are some projects that are kind of doing that. They're sort of, like, continuing on knowing the risk. You got, I mean, Tether's a great example. Yeah. You know, they're just, they're just doing their yeah. thing. Yeah. I'm very, yeah, I, I mean, bet you they work with the government, though. I bet you money. I think I they've got the government by the balls because they got all the, they got a huge <laughs> cut of the T-bills, man. And they don't want to, yeah, you, know, you know, if, if you've got the, if you've got I, the T-bills cornered, you're probably like, you've got some negotiating I, power. I think I would take think the so. opposite side of that, Corbin. I would say that by the, by the government allowing them to take T-bills, it gives the government a lot of power over them because, you know, they can, they can then choose to honor that stuff or not. Right. Like, I mean, I feel like if they don't do it, it the government ways. says they're just going to get Pavel Durov. <laughs> If they already haven't, who knows? Because because they're so clandestine, we don't we don't know, yeah, their relationship with like you know the government already. I I imagine their relationship with the government is pretty pretty intimate. That'd more be my or guess. less intimate than uh, Circle. I would say more honestly. I would say more intimate um, because Circle is is doing it in a more public facing way. But again, I'm not trying to spread fud or anything like that. I, it just seems to me like. Um, yeah they're um, incentivized to play nice yeah you've you've long been a, a tether truther uh, <laughs> uh T- I believe... truther or denier tether denier <laughs> <laughs> whatever it is yeah exactly uh you were calling pretty hard for the complete collapse of tether uh during the last yeah i uh, was downturn i was yeah. a... I, was, I, uh, I, was. I briefly was that as well, and I even had an open short on Tether. And guess what happened during that period? Oh, wow. <laughs> USDC depegged. Tether yeah, fucking ripped. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, but but you know why, Corbin? There's a good reason for that because I I was a party to that as well. It's because everybody trusted USDC more, and they were able to they were to, able to withdraw actual dollars out of USDC, and they weren't able to get out of USDT. Right? That was that was the reason. Um, so again, hotel California wins again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but I was wrong. You're right, Graham. I was wrong on that. And, uh, I wasn't I right, but, uh, I wasn't as wrong as you. I was very wrong, but I, I, I also wrong. think though, <laughs> I also think though that, um, uh, Part of the reason that I think I was wrong, though, is I think then that the government has a pretty good relationship with Tether. Maybe not directly, like, you know, the whole New York um, AG situation, but I just don't see the gov- the U.S. government. I mean, like, like you said, Graham, look what happened to the Telegram guy. That was that was not over money. There's no way that these guys, these these three or four execs in, tele- in, in Tether are not like haven't been approached by intelligence agencies you really you really believe that i just i don't know i don't believe that yeah i think it's quite quite likely all right what else we got here um let's see if we got any good uh, i have a couple memes. questions for for cameron hold on uh so yes. on your two flation thing i was just hoping that you could maybe walk <laughs> through a little bit about how you come up with your stats um on to on me- what the actual inflation rate is yeah 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 and why it's it deviates from from a lot of the other more mainstream measurements okay i will i will first preface this by saying i am not our resident inflation expert and I probably moved more or less full time uh, to to uh, Nuon back in like April or something like that. So I'm a little bit, little bit, you know, not the ideal, but I can t- I can tell you a lot of what I've what I've picked up um, from the Gigabrains that we, we work with. Um, on one hand, it's just like, like I'm kind of seeing it from the outside. Like for, I'll, I'll kind of hit from like a simplified version first. It's like first of all, the way the government does this is like crazy old style like census like it's it's so ridiculously bad how they do this and what we did is we just said like okay let's just approach it like software 
you know, just like, I don't know, dude, give me the data and we're going to throw it into the system and right. Nothing particularly special in that. Also the government, the way they break things down, their methodology, I'll give you like kind of a little, little one that really, you know, we, we knew we smelled something when we started looking at it. Cause we were like, Hey, let's do this, this inflation proof stable coin. And then we're like, well, we can't use the BLS's number because nobody believes that, right? So we started looking into it, looking into their methodology. And just I remember coming across this one where they're like matter of factly saying like, hmm, prices have gone up in the 80s. And because of that, instead of buying steak, people are buying chicken. So we're going to remove steak and put in chicken. And I'm just like, no, you can't do uh, that. Right? The BLS. Good old BLS. Boo. Yeah, exactly. Like, not okay, dude. And they just say it. They're just like, yo, this is what we did. This is why. So we don't do those kinds of shenanigans. But if I if I were to like take kind of a more um let's say uh play devil's advocate, you know, I would say that trueflation seems to be faster and more volatile. A lot of serious people use our indexes to or or these indexes to predict what the BLS is going to do because we are so far ahead. And I think they often also somehow soften, you know, they kind of smooth, you know, because we went up to, I think, 12%, 13%. I don't remember what the BLS went up to, six, eight, whatever, something like that. Uh, yeah, and now like we're already down. Close we to hit nine, like, yeah. yeah, and we hit like one, right, just recently, and we're, we're coming back up to like 2%. The BLS might not hit such a low, low number. So I think we're faster, more volatile, more, more realistic. Uh, more honest, but you know the world still runs on the BLS's number, so you know it is what it is for but, now. Yeah, my, that, did that help? For now. Yeah, it does. <laughs> my favorite anecdote about the BLS was um, if you look at the BLS's numbers for uh, the cost of like a a pickup truck, they show okay. that a cost of, of a pickup truck truck from 1980 to 2020, whatever it was, 21, yeah. has stayed flat or or fallen slightly. And the okay. reason is because a truck now has so many more features yeah. that those features get discounted because they weren't yes. available in 1980, right? Like that's anti-lock brakes, that was a that was a super big yeah. feature in 1980s, and cruise yeah. control, that's a super big feature. So your five thousand dollar truck you got in 1980s is the yep. same inflation adjusted as your thirty thousand dollar truck now, which is just you know ludicrous. And, and let me they're, let they're me rant on stats. that for a little bit. Yeah, they are juking the stats. And, you know, when we, before we really went live, like we had our, our researchers, we were all working together, you know, and we were just going through everything and we were just about to go live. And I just remember like doing this one last check, like, okay, so we, we landed on CPI, you know, consumer price index. Um, but I'm just like, okay, so inflation is doing that. But like, there are homeless people now where I grew up and there weren't homeless people when I grew up, right? Like, Something is janky. It's not just like, oh, 25% higher prices. Like, it's really bad. So I start looking into all this, and you're totally right. So what they're doing is they're stealing, you know, through this, they are stealing those new features, the value that those new features bring by saying like, oh, you know, guess prices didn't go up. Productivity goes up, right? They steal that from us. They're, they're stealing the productivity by printing the money, you know, like, and saying like, oh, no, it's all the same. And then to just to go all the way, the one that I think gets me the worst is, there's there's a cycle that I've seen, and I'm not a macroeconomic guy, but like I'm I can see patterns enough, right? So they print the money. You know, we see the global liquidity going up now, so they're going to print the money. The money is going to go into assets, so assets are going to go up, right? So people who hold assets, people you know, generally have to be somewhat you know doing okay to hold an asset. So assets are going to go up. Rich guys get happy then, and then they're going to sell. Assets are going to drop. And all this money enters the market, making consumer prices go up. And so just, just watching how terrible this system is for like the average Joe, seeing it in more clarity like I have been, is just, it's just sad. It's just, we got we to gotta do something, dude. It's a mess. It makes me mad. Are there any um? Are, are is Trueflation doing anything beyond the U.S. dollar at the moment? Like, are you guys looking at um, other G seven nations and being like, these guys are a, reporting somewhat more accurately, so you can tell that U.S. is kind of like putting their finger no, on the scale. And and frankly, I think the U.S. isn't like 
terrible in how they do things. It's bad. Yeah, that's the that's the joke. Yeah. That's the true joke is that America is maybe the best at, at reporting numbers. So just think of how bad like the EU is in Japan. Yeah. I mean, that is complete like magic numbers there, right? Interesting. Yeah. We did recently do Argentina. Like I think actually the government asked us to. I, I wasn't part of like like not like Malay called up Stefan, like, hey, let's do a true inflation for Argentina, but like pretty close. I don't know, like something like that. But I feel anyways, like yeah, the, energy of, did the, Argentina. the energy of Stefan <laughs> and Malay in the same room would be just, wow. that would be a lot to handle, man. It would be extreme. That would be fun. <laughs> that would be fun, dude. Running uh, 180 in Argentina right now. Yeah, just a cool 180. Wild, yeah. I, I uh, actually ordered some some T-shirts uh, for a a uh, conference that that Bitcoin dot com is attending in in Argentina a few weeks ago, a week ago, and then yeah. I, they sent me a a um, an invoice like a week ago. We paid it, and then I looked at the invoice again again yesterday, and uh, yeah, like the amount was was very different already. <laughs> if wow. you if you converted it, yeah. Wow. That's intense, dude. Yo, so uh, how about this uh, this Michael Saylor guy here? Look at him. that's great. He's doing great. <laughs> going to the rescue. Wait, is is he? I don't know what to these? make of this. Is like he, he posted he, this? Yes, he's he's making oh, his wow. own AI generated like Bitcoin of, of him <laughs> of him. <laughs> was it saving the world? I guess with Bitcoin. I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's crazy. gassing the world. It looks like he's gassing the world. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's got ulterior motives, man. <laughs> he's got a, that's a gas tank. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> secular no, dude. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, oh. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, what else we got? I um, I so so just sticking on this uh, inflation thing for for a little longer. Do you? Sure. Um, I don't know if you have any um, if you have any opinions on where inflation is heading now. Um, my guess would be oh. up again, with the Fed starting an easing cycle. It, it's it seems like maybe your indication uh, has kind of bottomed out and and maybe. It looks yeah. like it might ref be reflecting that too. Yeah, but but again, like uh, I, I, again, I'm not a soothsayer and I'm not a genius on this. I just kind of look and generally sense. So to me, it's going to be money printer go burr, assets go up, then CPI goes up, then interest rates go up. That seems to be the the you know step by step thing from from where I sit. So yeah, I do think it's kind of at the bottom, but I think it might stay low for a bit because I think this new money printer go burr is going to go into like assets you know what i mean like home prices so there might be some inflation there yeah that'd be my guess you know so you're saying that uh in that cycle the inflation is driven mainly by when the asset holders start to cash out and just like splurge yeah and to be clear i don't have any proof for that like i i do clearly know that it goes to the assets first and then like it leads to you know the cpi but I don't have proof that it's like, oh, someone just sold all of his Bitcoin and then spent it all on, you know, like, you know, whatever you spend yeah. your Bitcoin gains on, right? I, I can't yeah. prove that, but that's my feeling, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the difference with the COVID stuff is the stimulus went directly to people, right? Exactly. So yes. Yes. It didn't go, didn't necessarily go into assets. It just went everywhere yeah. sprayed it all over everything which is which is actually i mean my feeling now looking at this that's almost better for for the people because like this idea of like the idea of like pumping the rich guys bags like oh your real estate just you know went up your 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 art just went up all your little asset things go up and then it goes to the people and it's like oh it's not because we printed the money you know it just it just happens right as opposed to just like here let's just put the money straight in the people's hands and then of course Prices are going to go up, but at least they got to take, they got a taste on the way, you know, they got the airdrop. <laughs> they got the airdrop. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 I understand that. It's also a little more, maybe a little more honest too, right? Like, um, sure. the, yeah. Cause there's a direct, there's a direct correlation there that everyone can see. 
you can see where the, yeah, the yeah. money is actually going. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, because it's really a shame. Like, really, like you know, no, joking aside, I mean, like, dude, things are messed up. You know, like I'm just thinking, like you know, where I grew up, when I grew up, as, as opposed to now, and it's just like, it's it's not happy. It's not no it's no di- like, like you know, if you yeah. talk to old friends from high school, most of them are miserable. Like yeah, nobody's seriously. nobody's doing great. Nobody's doing great. No, Very few people are doing like, great. I'm doing yeah. good. I don't worry. Yeah, like, everyone's worried. Yeah, and yeah. Like, even even kids that kind of like. I grew up with, um, you'd have some kids, you know, from the affluent neighborhoods and then some kids from like sure. the dirt poor neighborhoods, but they all can, you know, sure. can, they, at least in Canada, they all, you know, end up at some shitty public school, right? Private schools aren't right, a right, right. thing in yeah. Canada. Same here. Yeah, um, yeah. So, you know, poor and rich are all kind of mixing together. Uh, but even like rich guys that I knew were like from pretty good families. They're all yeah. kind of like <laughs> just getting by. Everyone's getting by. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not, it's not happy. I don't like that. Like, cause then, then like, you know, again, like Murad comes to this whole thing, like therefore meme coins, right? And sure. I got some meme coins. It's fine. But it's like, I'm sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Before we get there, can we just pause and say like, this is not okay. Like everybody's sad, depressed and broke and getting broker. Like it shouldn't be okay. One of, one of my rich, rich childhood friends, you know, he was from the fancy, uh, the fancy neighborhood from uh, what's that, what's that area called up north in Graham Lake Lake near Pass what what is it Lakewood Lake Ridge can't remember yeah yeah <laughs> fancy rich people up there they had nice houses Corbin and I are both from the, the same hometown in uh, Canada yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I Lake have View. got to say Lakeview Bitcoin right. but but this guy's now trading Bitcoin. shit coins like has changed my memes. mind. <laughs> oh is he really is he dude really? he's like he's like not just buying like, but trading. <laughs> yeah, he's like actually trading meme coins and he's doing pretty well. Like, but oh I think God. he, he oh wouldn't be God. doing well were it not for the meme coins. Like, I, th- I think he'd wow. be kind of struggling. So the meme coins is like, wow. kind of saved this guy's like rich kid legacy. He's, he's, doing, he's wow. doing okay. Because of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do want to be, be clear. I'm not, I'm not anti meme coin. I, I love them. I, I absolutely love meme coins. And I, I always have like, you know, I had a, yeah, yeah, I love throwing, I always get, I always get rug pulled. I'm so bad at choosing them, but I, I love it anyways. You know what I mean? Like I, I love the, the, the thing. So I'm not, I'm not talking bad about them so much, but it is just like, come on guys. Are we just not going to like, we're going to take a quick look and say like, maybe there's, maybe it's not okay that we're pushing to this, you know? Yeah. I, I, is this what the we've last, become? Yeah. <laughs> the last, the last shit coin I bought, I bought in with uh, <laughs> Cam. It didn't, it didn't go well. Do you, do you remember Evo AI? <laughs> oh, I remember very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They all go like that for me. They all go yeah. like that. Yeah. It was a fun. It was fun while it, Except, while it lasted. Well, what was trippy is I opened up my Solana wallet, and of course I have like a, a meme coin one, and of course they're all down to zero, right? But all of a sudden, one was like, and I have I have a limit of a hundred dollars, like because I know I have a problem, like I'll only go a hundred dollars on a meme coin, right? And so I lose a hundred dollars on every single token that I buy. And I open it, I have like eight hundred dollars. I'm like, what the hell? It was like Chud Jack. So like my Chud token has been pumping. Good call. So I think I'm brand new. Yeah. Well done, sir. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> oh, so Cameron, God. I know you're in Japan, right? So you, you live here? Yes. You live in Japan? I do, um, yes. How would you compare because you were talking about kind of the the attitude or the feeling in in America, which I would echo, yeah. like it seems, it seems there's a lot of like feelings of uh, not desperation, but just kind of not happy with the the current situation. Yeah, yeah. How would you compare that to uh, the atmosphere in Japan? Well, I mean, I I absolutely love it here, and I, I I've thought about this a lot, and I do kind of feel like um, it reminds me of my childhood. You know, like not, I mean, it's very different. Obviously, Tokyo is very different than the oh, California. I have, I have the same feeling, yeah. man. Yeah. 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 This is like That's everyone's happy kind, here. nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 So it's like, it's, uh, and the kids, yeah. it's totally fine. The kids just be, you know, out all day. Kids are kids uh, and like, it's, it's wholesome it's vibes. Yeah. I think yeah. the world is no longer yeah. wholesome. Yeah. The parents though, too, yeah. are, they seem happier. Like when I go back to the States to see my family every yeah. year, uh, the parents are talking about like this kind of like financial situation and, job stuff and everything but when i'm with the japanese people around my kids and stuff it's it's just like 
let's go to the park. What are we going to do next week? I mean, it seems yeah, it seems like Japanese yeah. people are less less unhappy. I would say, or but like, uh, Japan is getting poorer yeah. for sure. Yes, very, yeah, sure. very much so. Uh, sometimes yeah. you go around, like even in Tokyo, I mean, even espe especially in Tokyo, some neighborhoods you go around and you're like, oh, wow, you know, there's a lot of people living a standard of life that is like, by Western standards, poverty. They've got a tiny apartment sure. that like, sure. with, uh, you know, drafts coming in and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, cockroaches everywhere do you think it's because <laughs> japanese people, people are more likely like to live within their means like i i, I still find this yes sh surprising when i do go back to canada it's like how many people are both not doing well but can but refuse to make sacrifices yeah up the tits mm. with the debt yeah 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 <laughs> yeah i'm not but i'm not sure like yeah definitely the money part is i think you're right about all that it, like you know the, it's coming for the whole world um, but for me right now, it, I think it's just a slice. I think it's all, it's almost like I heard somebody say Japan is like a respawn point in a video game where, you know, like if you're playing and you, you respawn, like they don't put a lot of enemies there, you know, so you can get out and then go back. <laughs> and like, it's a silly thing, but like, I actually feel that way. Cause I go outside and I'm like, dude, like a, a simple example, right? Like, you know, I, I'm married and like, I, I'm not like flirting, but I'll, I'll be at like bars late at night sometimes and talking to a girl or something. And like, at the beginning, when I go there, I'd be like, hey, you know, let me take you home you know, or let me walk you home, right? And the, my thought is just like, it's three o'clock in the morning, you're wasted, you know, get you home. Well, apparently here, that means like I was trying to go home with them, right? Which I found out later on, right? But forgetting Ricky, that part, the fact that they do just go home like three o'clock drunk and get home fine. Like there, there's like, there's almost no, no danger and just that brings a, a comfort level. That is just very nice to be around. Yeah, for sure. Yo, so yeah. any other, uh, hey, David, hey, you guys uh, ready to wrap this up here? You guys have anything else you'd like to share? Um, I have a trying to think I, I'd like to Go share. Ahead. Uh, just, uh, it's obvious, but, uh, it's a good one. Because, you know, uh, yeah, this meme. They don't know it's October. They don't know. <laughs> Q4 is very bullish, guys. And uh, <laughs> it's coming. Uh, Man. Please. Can, can you, I, up, think, um... I think it's going to be so funny. I'll be so wrecked, but it's going to be so funny if we get rug pulled on this cycle. Like, at some point, the four-year cycle isn't going to play out. And I know yeah. already I'm going to be all in when that comes. Yeah. And it's going to be miserable, but it's also going to be hilarious, you know, just because, like, we knew it was coming. We just, like, it couldn't go yeah. on forever. <laughs> we deserved it. <laughs> we deserved it. <laughs> yeah. Please, not this time. Not this time. Not this time. Not this time. Give, just give it one more cycle. One more pump. <laughs> <laughs> and I should, I should probably throw out a quick disclaimer for any, uh, any um, you know, federal agents listening i'm not actually <laughs> saying that we should break the law and security <laughs> laws like i want to see it happen i just don't necessarily want anybody listening to this to be the ones that do it but you know i wouldn't be mad if you when did you also. when you <laughs> said uh someone should suicide bomb DeFi. <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's my favorite dude i love this idea of internet suicide bombs you know what i mean like i want to see people i want to see somebody build up an account like, you know, on YouTube or Twitter, like build up a massive account, like doing like model trains or something like that. And like, just get like millions of people. And then just like, they have some other message that they want to get out and they just suicide did, did bomb you, their account. Do you guys it's remember like, the, the Solana suicide bomber? <laughs> the guy, I think he was like a punk. <laughs> okay, so he wasn't a suicide bomber, but he's like in jail now. He was like this Canadian dude that, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, he worked for Pump.Fun like early days. And I don't know, he had access to a bunch of stuff. He rugged them of like a shit ton of money and then airdropped it back to like, I can't remember a few of these, a few random Solana coins. And he was like Robin Hood, man. He basically stole from Pump, gave back to the token holders and said, they've been fucking you guys. I'm giving it all. And then he like went on a public oh, rant shit. being like, I don't care. They're going to arrest me forever. My mom just died. I have nothing to live for. Oh, and now he's in jail. And, uh, you know, he's doing, oh, no. his, doing his time. Yeah. No, I mean, it's jail. horrible. It's horrible and it's no, terrible. But I mean, like, in these times of desperation, right? If you are really in a hard spot, like, come on, go out with a bang, dude. Like, what's the yeah. only like, do a flip? You know what I mean? Like, 
Who, who's the, the airplane <laughs> guy? The airplane Why guy? are you guys letting me on this show? This is horrible. <laughs> Nobody do Sky anything King? I'm saying. Please. <laughs> what was the airplane guy? Clip it. Sky King? Clip it. <laughs> Sky King, yeah. Sky King did it. You know, oh, yeah. Dude. It's it's not yeah. good and it's not fun, but it's just like the state of the world is an absolute joke. There's almost no hope for the average person. And we should actually, I, I hope all of us here are actually serious about trying to solve that problem, right? But what else can we do in the meantime but just laugh, you know, like the dark humor, you know? Buy meme yeah. coins. Pick up Buy some retardio. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh. Oh, man. Good stuff. All right. Is yeah. that the pod? What a blast. <sighs> yeah. Thank you so Good much, podcast. Kevin, for joining us. <laughs> oh, my pleasure. Um, where can people find you? Uh, um, I don't know. Like maybe Twitter is probably the best one. Um, All right. Cameron Lee Music. It's, uh, Cameron yeah. Lee Music. We'll leave that in I don't, the uh, video I don't description. Make music anymore yeah <laughs> <laughs> i gotta change it i don't know what i'm gonna change it to like cameron do lee it. just keep it man yeah, no, cameron lee that. dj cameron lee dj music <laughs> there you go exactly <laughs> yeah all right but yeah that, that was pretty fun for... i had no idea oh yeah yeah, yeah. just like i, I had cameron no idea what kinds of topics you've been doing yeah <laughs> we're just basically trying to get everyone to break the law and uh yeah really good stuff we're egging <laughs> you on man <laughs> uh, good times uh, yeah nice yeah thank you sir and thanks for everyone right, uh who joined in to listen we'll see you next week on token narratives adios all right